Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're doing another early game playbook video. And today we're featuring Yuan Shu. Uh, he's the ambitious power monger, and he's one of the few factions uh, that starts with a very hard starting situation. So we're going to do this guy to make him a lot easier to play. Um, it's a bit of uh, exploit, but it's also something that we have been wanting to showcase on the channel. I've gotten some requests in the past about demonstrating a migration strategy. Now, what is the migration strategy? So if you look on the map here, you notice there's chunks of land that is not highlighted. Right, you see this commander right here? It's very clear, and all these are very darked out. These land are unclaimed land in the south. Also here, also there's some here as well. And these lands are very, very nice commanderies, especially in this region. You have some spice source, you have some tea, and we're going to exploit this. We're going to move away from the central plain region, uh, since we're stuck here next to Dong Zhuo, next to Liu Biao, next to He Yi, and also on this side there is Cao Cao, to the north there is Yuan Shao, there's Zheng Jiang. Everyone around here is not friendly towards us, so our strategy is to escape down south, build our base down south, build a very nice peaceful build up to equalize the difficulty that legendary difficulty present us and also our starting location is a lot of the reason why Yuan Shu is a very hard difficulty. Uh, Yuan Shu is a commander. He has a couple of neat bonuses. He has 25% income from commerce and industry. This is pretty insane uh, in the late game. Um, you get a nice big boost. Um, just flat boost for being the leader of the faction. Uh, spies are more difficult to conduct their mission uh, in your faction. Not a big deal. And what's not written here is that Yuan Shu, since he's part of the Yuan clan, has a wealthy family background. So he gets 50% more income from uh, family background wealth. And that's going to be a big thing because that's going to generate a lot of our gold as we head south because claiming unclaimed territory costs a lot of money. Every county costs 4,000, and every commandery settlement costs 8,000. So we need to save up to be able to take over these land. Uh, faction specialization. We have a faction unique resource called legitimacy. Uh, it increases, uh, there's four tiers, there's 400 points. Uh, this is a very late game resource. It doesn't decay. Uh, it goes up every turn. You can spend it on various things. Uh, the key here, what also makes Yuan Shu very difficult to play, is that you spend legitimacy points to recruit new characters instead of gold. Gold is rather easy to acquire, but legitimacy points are acquired very slowly. Especially in the early game, you start out with no legitimacy, so you can't recruit any new characters. Which really makes the migration strategy very suited for Yuan Shu, because there's not much you can do even if you stay here. Uh, I'll demonstrate this more once we go into the game. Um, so his focus is on uh, basically economy. Because you have very few access to characters in the beginning. You want to build up a lot of gold and you want to spend that gold to get diplomatic deals. There's a unique deal that you can get uh, that's basically having other factions declare you legitimate and it gives you eight points of legitimacy per turn from that faction that's going to be key so you want to keep a few friends even though you start out with very few around you your faction unique unit is the rapid tiger infantry this is available at rank three it's a shieldless sword bearing infantry so this is actually in my opinion pretty poor unit you're bad against archers you're bad against cavalry you're good when you clash on the front line, but that situation is very rare. And then you have the upgraded version, Warriors of the Left. Uh, once again, it's level six. This is a suited version, suited up version of the Rapid Tiger Infantry. Once again, no shield, uh, poor defense against cavalry, uh, only good in hand-to-hand -hand combat if you can get your units up into melee range. Uh, Faction Unique Building is Administration Replacement Building. This building spends legitimacy every turn and gives you extra income from all sources. This is more of a late game luxury building once you have a big pool of legitimacy to use. And you have a unique assignment which spends legitimacy to boost commerce farther. Uh, you don't have many noteworthy characters. Um, 
it's a generic general right here and uh, we're once again playing on legendary legendary difficulty with 40 minutes and let's jump in here all right guys so we loaded up in here uh, once again you start out with uh, a beginning mission that's just to defeat the army in front of you uh, we rarely looked at the reward here but this reward is actually key so taste of victory gives you 30 military supplies every turn as well as five morale for three turns the 30 military supply is going to be a key reason why we're going to fight this fight um, if we take a look on the map we start here in Nanyang we have a town it has a level 2 in building which is quite nice uh, as well as the open building slot and we have a Han Empire army Jia Chong, who's standing in front of us not a big deal very weak army very easy to manage uh, there's a jade mine down here these two points are your turn one missions um, now why is our start super hard we have a town here that has one county jade mine so there is no food available for you unless you decide to build a land development building and grow your own food from the settlement which is not advised uh, if you look down here if we expand south we have Xiangyang Xiangyang's held by Liu Biao who has two vassals so going to war with them means going to war with three different factions and also Xiangyang has a tool maker here so also a city with no food the closest food source if we go to war down south is the livestock farm but to get there we have to go through this direction so it really hinders our growth if we have no food and there they have one of the few early game missions which ask us whether we want to support Sun Jian or not and if we follow the story and support Sun Jian then Liu Bao's faction will attack us as part of the story mission so we're likely getting into a war with them towards the east we have the Chen farmland now this is available source of food but as you can see the Chen farmland is a very large territory so it's going to get us into a border dispute with Cao Cao right here as well as He Yi down here so securing this food supply will just expose us on more fronts also as i said story mission is going to dictate these three factions to attack us and if we look farther north we're ready at war with dong zhuo and they are very close to us within the first six turns they will have an army coming down to attack us and eventually even if we beat up that army Lü Bu will come down and fight us so we're in a very tough situation where we can't make this into a small city until we get food and it's just going to be a lot of pain so the best option is to head straight for the Yangtze River down here and sail all the way down to here we looked at the map earlier all this territory right here are unclaimed land this includes uh, Jiangyang's copper mine very very good commandery that's going to be our landing spot our goal is to grab this and then we'll go down south. There is Zhangke. Zhangke has a very nice trade port and spice setup. Uh, no, Zhangke has tea. Tea and trade port. I think, yeah, Zhangke has a tea and trade port. And also links into Changwu, which is the best peasantry income commander in the game. We have a few commandery guides on building up Changwu over here. But our goal is to just slip through, sail all the way down. And start grabbing these empty commanderies to build up and that's only going to take us maybe six to seven turns we'll be all settled by end of turn seven and we can play this like normal we started over there so let's first by fighting this but before we do we have to do all the diplomatic things all right so we got a tycoon and we got an eavesdropper uh technically this is not the best setup you could get you get only two items sometimes you get three sometimes you get four what I like to do is when we have a full army, highest value for diplomacy, to negotiate some deals. Usually on turn one, you want to negotiate a trade, trade agreement. But if you take a look, the only person we can trade with wants 15.8 points for a trade deal. So that's impossible. We're not going to get a trade agreement. Uh, so get that idea out of your mind. Well, only faction that's friendly to us is Sun Jian. He's all the way down south. We can't trade with him, but we can get some nice deal with him. For one, we can ask him to support our legitimacy. This is a deal I was talking about that will give us eight legitimacy points per turn. 
Uh, we'll take a look at the legitimacy points after we finish up this deal. And as you know, if you watched our Sun Jian guide, Sun Jian starts with the Imperial Jade Seal. Now this item is excellent for us because it provides prestige, it provides authority, it provides satisfaction. Now why are these important things? I'll explain once we get it. So we want to trade for it. What can we offer? Well, we start out with the Spy Master item. You always have this item at the start. It's a silver item, so it's worth quite a bit. And in this case, we got the Tycoon. It adds trade influence, and since we can't get a trade deal, it's pretty much not useful for us at this point. We'd much rather have the Imperial Seal. So we can trade these two Jade items, and we can easily pay the difference here. Now it depends on what item you start out with, but you should always have enough uh, points from your ancillary item to secure you this legitimacy deal and also the Imperial Jade Seal. And if you think about it, it kind of follows historical playthrough. Yuan Shu did get the seal eventually. Uh, not this way, but he does get it. Alright, so now we start with the seal. And we now get 8 legitimacy points from diplomacy, and the other 2 we get from our faction rank of being a noble. So that's why if we get prestige point and rank ourselves higher, we can get more legitimacy points going forward. And if we take a look, the first 100 points, there's only a penalty. You get minus 2 public order. That's not terrible, it's like half of a cruel tra trait, but it's still a pretty tough penalty. Even if you get it to 200 points, uh, between 100 and 200, you now have public water bonus. You also get prestige boost, so all these are good things. But you also have minus 5 diplomatic relationship with all factions. Nothing you can really do about it. It's basically saying that you are becoming more legitimate as the emperor, so everyone else hates you. And you can see this trend continue as you rank up more. You get more prestige point. Really just jumpstart you towards getting into becoming a king. You get farther worse relationship with all their factions which makes it better for you to escape down south where there's less neighbors so that penalty isn't going to punish you as hard as staying here you get more public order you get income from all sources Yuan Shu is all about making money and lastly uh, once you get above 300 points a relationship goes to negative 20 you get plus 9 public order in all your commanderies which is nice because you can use that extra public water to get more tax collection buildings, allow you to generate a lot of free income and a lot of commanderies, as well as 20% income from all sources. So these are all nice bonuses, and you don't lose these points. You can choose to spend them to recruit generals, um, but aside from that, uh, you're going to be using a lot of generic generals as Yuan Shu. The best way to get generals Yuan Shu through marriage and through capturing them on the battlefield. So a lot of the skills that increase your chance to capture generals, take those because capturing generals is the easiest way for you to get uh, new generals as Yuan Shu. Spending 50 points is a big deal because it max out at 400, so you're spending half of a bar um, of your legitimacy point to get a new general. Unless it's super good, I usually wouldn't spend it. So we're going to give the Jade Imperial Seal over to Yuan Shu. Uh, the satisfaction would tide over some of our generals. Uh, since we can't get new generals, we have to treat our existing generals very nicely. And we can also give him this. Uh, not bad items. Some authority points never hurt. And we can jump into this fight. Uh, you can choose to fight it. Uh, fighting it, pretty simple. But I like to just delegate this fight since I'm disbanding all the armies afterward. Alright, so we beat them. Sometime you capture him, like now you capture him. So in this case, I like to recruit him. You do lose out 125 gold per turn, but like I said, it's very hard to get generals. Um, and Jia Cong is not terrible. If you make him a uh, administrator in the future, you get 10% extra peasantry income here. Um, so it's not not bad. Um, let's take him on. We can always fire him later if you don't want him. Uh, I'll be taking income. Alright, so we got this extra mil military supply. This extra military supply will tide us over as we travel down towards the river. Once you hit the river, you, will, you won't lose much military supply at that point. 
because you only lose five military supply per turn when you're on the river uh, terrain. And since we have pretty decent yes. cunning, right? The two of them combined has plus eight military supply per turn. So the minus five would not be losing military supply here. So at this point, we are going to disband everybody. We don't need an army because we're going for unclaimed territory. So we want to save up all our gold, right? As much gold generated as possible. And in that spirit, we're also going to be building a tax collection building here for some free gold. And we're going to send um, maybe him since he has low satisfaction. Um, actually, let's introduce the characters here. Uh, we start out with Yuan Shu and Yang Hong, who are generals. He's our only sentinel. So we're going to be using him a lot for assignments early on once we get to our new territory. Lady Feng is Yuan Shu's uh, wife. And Yuan Anyang is our eldest daughter who has already come of age. She is an excellent trade bait. I would save her uh, till a little bit later in the game once we settle down south and have a decent army to negotiate a more favorable uh, marriage assignment with her. Right now we don't have much army count so diplomacy wise getting a marriage for her would not result in a favorable deal. Um, I would use her as trade bait or marriage bait to get an excellent general over maybe along the line of Sun Ce from uh, the Wu faction since they do start out friendly with us. Um, Yang Xiang over here, uh, Yan Xiang has humble. So he has he never will have desire for higher office. So he's probably one of the key generals we want to level up because we don't have to treat him special to get him to stay happy with us. He also starts out with re resourcefulness. So it's excellent general to recruit first into your army once you settle down south because you do start out with flaming shot. Um, Zhang Heng over here is another general. He is actually pretty decent on the battlefield. You get a little bit of uh, command boost, morale boost here. Um, he also has good income from all sources as administrator. If you don't get Jia Chong as your first uh, capture, uh, in this case we got lucky and got him, you know, oftentimes you don't get him. So these two are both good candidates for administrators, as well as Yang Hong, obviously. But getting another um, Sentinel is going to be pretty crucial because they have a lot of key assignments and they also make great administrator with their high expertise stat. Um, but at this point, I think we're just going to use uh, Zhang Heng Zhang, Zhang Cheng, just because he's not going to be happy with us and he's going to be more happy. And we're also trying to get him to level up so that he can get the resourcefulness. Um, so we're going to assign him to stimulate the market. And immediately, we're going to turn our guy to March. We're not going to fight Nanyang. Getting this will stop us from moving as far as we can because taking any settlement will just kill our movement point. What we want is to get into the water as soon as possible. Right, this is our route. It's going to take us three turns to get into the water. All right, we're going to be trespassing through Liu Bao's land, but we don't care. And that's all. That's all for turn one. Get your building done. Get your assignment done. Get your Imperial Seal. Fight the battle. Try to capture the guy. Um, I find Delegate to often result in a capture much better than fighting it. Sometimes fighting it, you kill him on the battlefield and you don't see him anymore. So let's go to next turn. All right, nothing really happened. Uh, you see new characters become available if we take a look at the court screen. 50 legitimacy point to recruit. And we just don't have that. So we, there's nothing much to do. We first few turns very peaceful. Our goal is just to get down over here. And as you can see, if we didn't get the 30 points of military supply from that first mission, we would be suffering through heavy attrition We'll be losing a lot of supplies as we're moving through hostile territory. So that 30 points is very key for the first three turns. Get us into the water, sets us up to sail down south. So once we're in the water, we're totally fine. Um, once again, nothing else is happening. Uh, things are still being built. Let's continue. All right, we got an item. Mm, pretty neat. Let's just give him the horse. And let's finally get into the water. All right, now we're sailing for this point right here. We're going to see the empty commandery about here, and then we can just land there at that point. Uh, this route should be pretty safe. You might run into a Han army sailing down, but they won't bother you. 
Uh, they're not very aggressive. They'll let you through. Uh, back here, we're going to continue to upgrade this. Now, the purpose of upgrading this is, one, it's free gold because it costs nothing to build this and it gives us nice, decent peasantry income. The other factor here is that we want to build up our public order pretty negatively here because eventually we're going to lose this settlement um, to Dong Zhuo's attack. Uh, but we can hold on to it for a, a long time, surprisingly long time. Um, but if you lost it, it's fine too. But right now, we just want to set it up to be a problematic commandery once they take over. That's the thought. Also, free gold. So let's continue. All right, it's spring. Uh, this is turn four. Uh, Xu Huang's army appears over here. Uh, this army won't aggressively attack your town. They're trying to make their way towards Luoyang. But the second you see them, you should be prepared. Because Dong Zhuo's army is coming down this way at the same time. So expect to get attacked next turn. Uh, if not next turn, then a turn away. Maybe two turns. But I think next turn we probably see them. Um, it's fine. You can hold off against that first attack. You gotta maneuver yourself around the town. A lot of arrow towers in town. So you can totally defend yourself. Over here, we just want to continue down sailing. And we also can pick up a new reform. Um, since we're going down south, we have access to a lot of spice. So eventually we want to pick up a diplomatic mission. We want to pick up Silk Road Expedition for all the spice upgrades. And since this also gives you Onyx Dragons, and if you see any of our guides, Onyx Dragons are excellent units. Excellent units. Just the best range unit in the game. So we're going to go towards that. Our choices are either getting Foreign Envoy, built up extra trade route, uh, we don't have any possible trade partner even with our current trade route, so this is not going to help us much. Uh, this will give us 15% extra income from commerce. That will help a little bit, so we're going to go this route. And that's it. And we're going to be continue selling down, and we're going to end our turn, as I think we're going to get attacked soon. Okay, turn 5. Uh, nothing happened. Uh, we just want to continue selling down. Um, usually this is when you are guaranteed to get attacked, I think, at this time. And that's fine. Uh, we can beat that first battle back uh, pretty easily. See, there's armies sailing down, but they won't attack us. Uh, we're going to keep sailing until we see that copper mine that's on claim. And we're building up a nice bit of saving here, which is going to be key. Uh, because we recruited him, it's going to be a little bit extra drain our economy. But we have plenty of money to work with, so it really doesn't matter. Um, usually, if you want to abandon Nanyang completely, not try to win this fight, then I suggest you on turn 4 to demolish your inbuilding because you do get extra money from the refund, a thousand gold here. And you can then downgrade the town as well for another 300 gold because if you demolish both of these, it will just leave the tax collection building as the only building. Um, it's a pretty nice trap for the enemy to take at that point. But if you do plan on defending it like I am, then don't do that because this is a nice source of income. That's pretty much 300 gold right here per turn for you. So let's continue as we're going to get attacked for sure now. Yep, right on cue. Dong Zhuo's army comes on turn 5. Um, there, If you look at the army here, um, there's three generals attacking us. And they have a lot of cavalry, which is a bit problematic. But because the way the map is set up, your goal is just to avoid conflict for as long as you can. It's a bit of a hide-and-go-seek approach to the fight. It's not the most honorable way to fight. But it's the way you have to do it in this game. If you want to be really honorable and let them take your city, then that's fine too. Then just demolish the buildings the turn before so you get all the gold you could out of Nanyang. But we're not that honorable. We're going to be playing hide and go seek with that army and wiping them out. Alright, so we loaded up in here. Uh, the enemy is attacking us from this direction here. What we want is to drag them outside of the cities for as long as possible. Preferably through more of these arrow tower attacks. So what we want is just to escape out of this exit here. Stack everyone to the front. We want to be as close to the door as possible. We want to get out. Basically, we want to get out. Make them come this way. Uh, we don't really need to do barricades. We'll just jump start here. Goal is pretty simple. Let them eat as many arrows as possible. Uh, they have cavalry units with them. So it's going to be a little bit difficult. They might try to outrun you. And if they do catch up to you, give up your captain unit. Because they're... The slowest one because they are more heavily armored just leave them behind run with the other three unit uh, it's pretty simple hide and go seek tactic we just want to make loops around our city have them chase us um, this is actually the worst weather condition for us 
because it's a clear day, they see us. If the weather had been foggy or rainy, then you can actually start out from the far side of the camp and just run out. That way the distance will prevent them from seeing you. And then what they will do is they will spread out their cavalry to search. That's actually a much better outcome. This is the one that the sunny day outcome is the one where you might lose. Um, what you want to do is just try to drag them across. Uh, there's not much to show. We're just going to be running around. So we'll see you at the end. Alright guys, so I'm cutting it back here because uh, they caught us up here right here. We sacrificed our captain unit right here to hold them. So basically we were running around, right? And then they caught up pretty close to here. We left our captain unit right here to stall them. Also to have these arrow towers continuously hit them. And then we ran our guys over here. And then we basically just decided to fight back because most of their units are routed. At this point, I'm not just clicking claim victory because I want them to run through our settlement and get killed. Getting killed is important because if they have armies left over, they'll come back and fight us. And Xu Huang's army is going to be right outside and it's going to reinforce. So we're going to have to fight this fight all over again. But at this point, we killed everyone. We can just claim victory here. Nice little heroic victory. Alrighty. This is a pretty clean fight. Let's see if we capture any of those generals because that would be pretty neat. Uh, we got the armor. Ah, we captured Li Ju. Okay, so we don't have any vanguards in our army. And this guy isn't terrible, so we're going to be employing him. Obviously, a drain our economy, but it's very hard for us to get generals, so take them when you can. Uh, we'll be taking money, because I don't care if we lose this. We just want to save as much money as possible for our expansion down south. Alright, so this is now turn 6. Uh, we got a few items. We got a Taoist Monk. We're going to equip that on our faction leader right here. And we'll hand his other item to maybe just him. It doesn't really matter who we give at this point. Um, I didn't assign a new heir. I kept our son as the heir. He's not of age yet, but he's a commander, so that's a perfect uh, class for heir. We just got to wait on him for about 20 turns. He starts the game at 14, so it's not that long. So unfortunately, if we look here... Dong Zhuo's army is not done. Liu Fu is still alive. So he's likely to attack us again. Which will drag this army in as reinforcement. Because they're vassals to each other. So we're going to have to do that fight all over again. Um, this army is still very beatable. There's no cavalry in this army. So it's actually easier to run around. If you could manually select towers to attack these units. Kill the archers first. They're the ones who is most likely to catch up to your guys. As you make turns, they can start shooting at you. So they're going to be problematic. But more importantly, we are still selling down. We're getting really close. We can land this turn right here. And next turn, we'll have our new home. If we take a look down here, to our north, Jiangyang's large town is owned by Jia, Jia Long. He also has this territory up here. Uh, Chengdu, he has a piece of it, and the rest of Chengdu is owned by uh, Liu Yan, uh, Liu Zhang's dad, as well as there's some Han Empire over here. But to the south, these are all empty. Uh, we're going to be expanding down south. We're not going to fight them right now. Well, eventually we will. Once we build up our base down here, we can turn around and take over all of Chengdu, all of Shu region, and then also expand that deeper down south, take over all the spice trade, take over all the silk trade, and then just fight our way. Uh, towards the central plains um, however long we can hold on to this commandery it's not going to be a big deal if we lose it it's only giving us 465 gold per turn and because we are wrecking our public water we're going to reach a point where we don't even want this anymore uh, but at this point we can still fight them off so let's continue and like i said because we weren't able to kill him um, last turn we're going to have the problem of him attacking us and dragging this reinforcement army, which is actually the big force here to fight us. And we're going to have to do the run around one more time. So let's load up here and uh, do that fight. All right, we're loaded back in here again. Uh, one key advantage is that the reinforcement has to come this way. We can completely ignore him. He's just going to run in here and die. Uh, the weather, once again, is super clear. Uh, we want to drag that army across this way. So we're going to put our guys right here. All right. We're going to come right here. 
let them start chasing us, and then we'll drag them across, drag them across. Same idea. That guy will run to his death. Well, he made it inside. Okay. Run through this one. Wow. He's getting super lucky. Uh, not, not for long. Okay. He's gonna die inside. He's gonna run out and get shot by arrow. Uh, but we're, we're, our job is to drag them across. Now this army we don't have to kill off. Like last fight, we said we had to try to kill that army off to pre prevent this situation. After that Dongzhou army is dead, uh, the Han army won't attack us. They're not aggressive. Um, so we don't have to kill everyone. We just have to drag this one out, go for a tie or go for a morale victory. Um, they'll eventually take enough damage that they will just rout. We have to stay around here to get them coming across this line first before we escape. Because if we go across now, they'll just enter, which is what we don't want. We want them to try to come across. Once they clear this point, we can start going. And probably want to go in like this direction. So that they still want to chase you out like this. It's all about controlling the angles so that they don't go inside. You see, they're already taking a lot of damage. All right, they're past that point. Time to get moving. We don't want to get caught by their archers. At this point, there's nothing really much to show. Same idea. Um, so, see you at the end. All right, we were able to win that. We killed all the generals. Um, I wonder if we captured Xu Huang. That would be pretty neat, but I don't think we did. All right, so we got another item. Doesn't really matter at this point. Um, we held our town. So all is good there. We have a level up from the assignment. Pick up resourcefulness. Alright, at this point make sure you remember to go to normal stance. Because if you accidentally move, you won't be able to capture this turn. And it costs us 4,000 gold. And we finally have a home for ourselves. So at this point, what we want to do... Um, going forward is simply divide these two generals together so you move him outside so now we have two armies basically since we're going for unclaimed land it doesn't really matter how many generals in the army Yuan Shu, one of your generals should come down take over Zhang Ke's tea house and then continue to move down and grab the rest of Zhang Ke Zhang Ke should be your first commandery it's a commerce and industry commandery, uh, mainly commerce in the beginning with a tea house and a trade port, but eventually it's a commerce and uh, industry commandery. Very, very good commandery. One of the top 12 um, income generating commanderies in the game. And then you want to continue down over here and get over, get Cheng Wu. All of this is unclaimed. And then you want to build up an army once you have a good economy rolling down here and beat out um, Shi Hui's faction down here. Take over everything down south of this river. Get yourself a nice border with Sun Jian, who is still friendly to you. And also expand up north. Take out these small factions up here. Uh, grab all the land towards Hanzhong. Make yourself a nice border with Gongdu. And then you can decide which way you want to go. If you have a good relationship with Sun Jian, then perhaps you want to attack north first. Grab this territory. If you don't have a good relationship with Sun Jian, it looks like you're going to have to fight anyways. This choke point is very easy to defend. You just turn around, wipe out the south. All these are excellent commanderies. Once you wipe out Sun Jian, have control of the south and the southwest. Ooh, misclick. Um, then easy game from that point on. Swallow up the central plains. Win yourself the game. Now, why are we playing this way? Uh, as I explained, our start location has no food. Once we get here, one of our generals can grab Fuling's rice patty to supply our food from the beginning. Um, obviously, you have to build up all these commanders from scratch gonna cost you a lot of gold but our economy is decent if Ren Shu is good at anything it's building up a nice economy so we can build up in peace no neighbors until we meet up Shi Hui over here and once we have a nice strong base of these very very good commanders you get tea you get spice uh, you get the best peasantry income commander in Cheng Wu then from that point on uh, the rest of the world should be your oyster and that's our early game guide, and that's how you do a migration strategy. All it took us was seven turns. Not really a big cost for us to move ourselves down here. And we're still holding on to our starting commander here. Um, for how long uh, depends on 
how long you're willing to fend off against Dong Zhuo's army, but eventually we'll lose this, and that's okay, because we're going to be building up a nice big public order issue for someone else to take care of. So that's our guide for today. Hope this helped you to play one of the very hard difficulty factions in the game in Yuan Shu. And hopefully uh, this guy can also inspire you to try some other migration tactic with other factions in the game as well. So until next time, bye!